right? But one day when I left to go to Atlanta's airport, I switched with my wife, and I'll never forget, I'm in line at TSA and my wife called. As soon as I pick up, she's like, this freaking truck. I'm like, girl, down, man. You next? <laughs> she's like, I hate this truck. I'm like, you're cool. I got my guys, right? I got my mechanics, right? I got my guys, and I got a spark plug. I call me, like, ink come through. Like, I'm from the hood, so I got my guys in the hood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 you kept it flat, you good. Call me. <laughs> and so I got my guys that I can call. They'll come out with no problem. But the thing is, whenever I go to them, I give them a great tip. Mm. Right? And so my wife called, and she said, ink, this is going on. I said, no problem. I said, go to my guys. Call me when you get there. And my wife called me as she was pulling in, and I'll never forget, when I picked up, she said to me, Inky, they're charging the car, they're running, are they gonna rob me? I said, no, you should be good, just keep going. I said, call me when they get, they get done doing what they do. She called me, and I said, what did they say? She said, Inky, they told me I was good, and they had to pay for a thing you already took care of. Me. Wow. In other words, they asked Coretta Scott King the question, year that the Martin Luther King passed, and the question they posed to her was, why after Martin Luther King died, why didn't you ever remarry? She said it's easy to be an automatic downgrade. They look good. They look the part. 
why are you giving me the jackhammer? And he said, look at him. They had tapped out. They was drinking pickle juice. <laughs> we started at the same time, though.
Man picked up and said, Ain't you got a job like yesterday? You can leave tomorrow. There was a job at the rec center in our neighborhood creating leadership curriculum for the kids in Atlanta, Georgia, on the east side of Atlanta, Kirk put the kids at. Yes, sir. Don't clap that, you probably hear what did to <laughs> Oh. He said, We're paying you 21000 a year. Wow. I said, Man. Honey, I'll be there tomorrow. I get to Atlanta, I call him, no answer. Mm. Email him, never reply. I went up to the gym, the lady there, I told him what had transpired, he had emailed, he had phone call, and now he ain't with us no more. I said, well, I got my own resume, can we look at it? She looked at it, uh, you got a master's. You are qualified. I'm like, what's that? <laughs> and I found myself in my white grandmother's home, two blocks away from where I grew up. The one that went up. My wife had had our daughter Jada. My wife was teaching at the time. And my daughter, my daughter Jada was sleeping a rag that somebody bought her for a birthday, and we would put pillows in it. And every morning my wife would get up, get dressed for school, I would get up, get dressed, I would go try to find a job. People would say, nah, I'm overqualified. And I knew at a certain point it was because I had my arm was paralyzed. Mm. And so most of them looked at me like, man, what can my man bring to us? Right? But they couldn't say that. Right? And I was cool with it. I'm built for it. You understand? Like I'm built for it all, right? Ah. So I was cool. And so at the time, the only thing I had was my book. Right? And some of the people on the line heard this, and I'm going to share it with y'all. I'm going to bring it home for you. I'm going to tell you how I got on the stage today. The only thing I had was my book at the time, Luke Johnson, and the Amazing Story of Faith and Perseverance. I started writing that from journaling. Wow. Like, it was cathartic for me. I just used to journal. I put it in book form, wrote it, came out when it did well. But at the time, when I had it, I just had it. Right? It was something that I wanted to give to my grandmother. Right, and I got up one morning and I had my book and I get up and me and my wife was getting dressed and I looked at my wife and I said to her, I said, baby, you're not going to believe me, I'm about to go meet Oprah. And my wife said, oh, hey, you know Oprah? <laughs> I was like, no. You say, you know about that Oprah Studios? I was like, no. She said, you sure? That's why you need to stop playing. Right? I would say he was part of the white part of the good thing. And you see the inheritance. That's why you stop playing. My wife said to me, You sure? I said, Yes, ma'am. She said, Go for it. Oh, I have a two way suit. I had almost $300 to my name. As you can see, I ain't gonna win here two hours. <laughs> and I said to myself, I'm like, man, if I get the flat, it's a wrap. <laughs> and I take off driving when I get to Chattanooga. I call my boy Jeff, Jeff's in the turtle. Jeff pick up, I said, Jeff, you got no believe in me. Jeff said, what you got, me? I said, man, I'm in Chicago, I'm about to be open. Jeff said, hey, you ain't gonna be open. <laughs> He said, nah, I don't know. He said, oh, I know what this is. He said, if you're extremely ambitious, extremely driven person, he said, man, I get it. He said, I want you to call me when you get to Knoxville because the chances of that happening, slim to none. I just don't want you to be too let down and it doesn't happen. Wow. I call him when I get to Knoxville. He picks up. He says to me, you still going, aren't you? I said, yes, sir. He said, stop by and pick me up, man. I'm going to ride with you. I don't want you to be too let down. We get to Chicago that night. Jeff goes up, Jeff gets a room, we get up the next morning, I go to the desk, I'm getting directions, Jeff is standing in the corner, looking at me, getting ready to go work out. I get the directions, I go and walk out of the door, Jeff drives over to me and says, ain't waiting. He said, I want to go with you, man, I get us a taxi, I just don't want you to be too let down when it doesn't happen. Mm. We get the hard call. Take it up, blocks. People everywhere, this is one of the last shows that happened. And we stop and get out of the taxi. Jeff says to me, ain't gonna go across the street to this coffee shop. I'm sure this won't be long. I'll be seeing you real quick. 
I got my book. I'm walking around the building. Every door that opens, I was shooting to the door. I was saying, hey, Ricky Johnson, I drove up from Atlanta. I just want to get you on my book. And she said, get out of here. Like, get out of here. Don't do that. I was like, man, y'all rude. I thought y'all were going to be with God. I got a book. <laughs> I just got a book. And so I got so discouraged. I went around the back of the building. It was hot. I sit down. Right? I put my back against the building. I look up. I'm like, man. Like, man, my wife can chew me out. I get up. I go around the side of the building. Everybody is winning at this point. It's a gentleman sitting on the curb. Looks to be homeless. I go and I sit down beside him, and I say to him, man, how are you doing? He says, man, I'm great. He said, how are you? I said, man, I've seen better days. The irony of the situation. Yeah. Hmm. I looked up to my left. Coming down the sidewalk was nobody but Oprah and her security guard. Yeah. I stand up. I fix my suit. I'm like, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, surely she's going to send security up. He's just going to move me out of the way. He's going to take my shot at me. I start walking toward her. They keep coming. They stop a feet away from me. She grabs my suit. She shakes it. She said, this is a nice suit. I think she's trying to see if I had a knife or a gun or something. <laughs> <laughs> nice suit, right? I said, thank you. I said, I'm Inky Johnson. I drove up to my plan. I just wanted to bring you my book. She grabs the book. I said, can I take a picture with you? I said, sure, no problem. You take the picture. She says, all right, I got to get in and do my show. I said, thank you very much. She was walking in, Jeff is running across the street like, hey, tell me the way. I was like, no, I didn't believe it.
this for 13 years, I work with the best of them. I've never handed out one business card. Mm -hmm. I've never went to somebody and said, can you hire me to? I've never cheated anybody. Mm -hmm. Right? I've heard people leave in the words of my grandmother. Like, I've heard, like, like adults don't need motivation and inspiration. They just need to be reminded of what's important. My grandmother told me this, and I live by it until this day. In life, you get what you get. Right? If you haven't heard anything else I've said, I'm Baptist, right? I feel being all day. I'm Southern Baptist, right? I'm going to leave you with this. Something happened. But me and my son, I got four minutes and fifty eight seconds, and we need every bit of it. Alright, the reason I use every bit of it, I feel like this is what I have permission to do with my life. Mm -hmm. And I'll get everything I got to. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm gonna share something with something happened real quick, real quick. Something happened around Christmas, uh, with me, my wife, and my two children. And so me and my wife is out shopping, and we're just hanging out and doing our thing. And my wife is shopping. I'm just walking around. She don't spend too much money. <laughs> and um, I walk up on these many four-wheelers, right? And when I walk up on them, I see them, I get excited. I turn back, I look at my wife, and I'm like, babe! <laughs> and she's like, no! <laughs> I'm like, come on, let us get one for our son. She's like, no, they're dangerous. She said, no, you got to hurt on me. Chill out. <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. They got to walk around the store, get a purse or something. She'll get it. She walked around and got a two purses. She gave me, and I got two for four of them. And so Christmas Day, we get up, and I had already been out early to crank them up. And so we get up, and me and my little man, we're rolling, and the girls in the front room, and so me and my son were walking by the window of the season. And he says, Dad, I'm going to go out to the little bike thing. I was like, you sure? Anything you want to go in the room with the girls? Let's open a present for you. He's like, no, I want to go out. I want to ride. I was like, all right, give me a second. I'm going to tell Mommy and we're going outside. So I going to tell my wife. He's like, me and Ink, going to go out to the forest. He's like, all right, cool. We'll come out take a picture video. And so we get out, and we got the first Ink kit. We got the elbow pad. We got the helmet. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I know it's about to be real, right? We got it all. Baby, oh, we got everything. And they, you know. And so the way, the way my wife and I teach our children, we teach them the cold words, right? In case we're out and the situation gets intense, we can yell the word and they know what to associate that with so they know how to respond to situations, right? Instead of always trying to protect them and save them from situations, they know how to respond. Like in life, it's not so much about what happens to us as it is about how we respond to what happens to us. Yeah. Like respond, yeah. right? And so I said to him, all right, Amy, go ride. I said, now, I'm going to put you on a seat and I'm going to get on the back right. Right? I said, now, the first cold words are, you know, light and heavy. I said, when I say light, you barely press it. It's going to be photo op time. We'll let mommy get her pictures, her video. Grandma get her pictures, her video. We'll ride and we're cool. We just go presidential way. Light. He said, got it, Dad. I said, all right, cool. Hit it. He's doing light. He's mastered it. I said, now, the next cold word is heavy. I said, now, when I say heavy, I won't be on here. You can sit on the seat. You mash it. Pedal to the metal. Pull it throttle. You scream. You fist pump. You haul out. Got it? Got it, Dad. He's right. I said, now the last two are skinny and rod. I said, this is how we're going to turn. I said, when I say skinny, you can turn skinny when you're on here by yourself and you're in the clear and you're all good. I said, now go on the back rack, don't turn skinny. I said, because there's a strong possibility you're going to throw me over here. My wife, your mom, have been with us living down 2035. Right? <laughs> I said, now when I say wide, if I'm on here and you turn wide, we're in the clear, you're all good. I said, you got it, got it, Dad. So he's eight. Right, so he gets arrogant really quick. All right, so we're riding, he thinks he's bastard, right? And we come over a hump and they're playing music, and I say to him, hey, hey, go wide. And somehow he heard skin. <laughs> he whips it. And as soon as he whips it, sure enough, I come off the back. And in mid-air, I'm looking under my arm pick, and I'm looking for my wife. <laughs> I'm like, I know it's about to get rid of it. Right? And I can't catch myself. But once I 